How's it going, everybody? Ballet at Brand here. So in this video, um, Maddie Allen was the first person that, to me in the Hex community, had really brought up the point of sudden wealth syndrome. And I'd, I'd heard about that when, when I was younger, right? Of the, I think the show was called like Extreme Makeover or something like that. And uh, with, I think the guy's name was Guy. <laughs> but anyways, when, when people win the lottery or when people are given things, um, you know, that they just totally don't know how to appreciate, then sometimes, you know, with, with the lottery or with someone that, say, uh, is in the NFL and they're kind of used to a smaller budget, now they have this huge budget with millions of dollars. Well, are you prepared for what that can kind of do? Um, money itself is an amplifier. And I know that funding Jim, Gary, he's brought up a lot of good points that, hey, he's known people that went from uh, wealthy to being poor to being wealthy again. But for me, when I think of things like this, <laughs> the, the, last thing, the last thing that I want to have happen, right? when you acquire wealth is to go back to what it was like before. And so uh, I think people should, should really consider a lot of these things that come with having a whole bunch of money. Um, sometimes the relationships that you have can be, um, you know, th there might be people that, that reach out to you that maybe haven't, you know, ever been necessarily friends with you or reached out to you for a long time, but then maybe all of a sudden after, they hear about you know your newfound success. Um, everyone's a everyone wants a piece of the pie, and so I just want to encourage and recommend to all of the hexicans, the pulse hexicans, and the pulsicans to really think about some of these things. Uh, when I mention that a thousand dollars became ten million dollars, that's just a ten thousand x, and that actually doesn't include uh, any staking, which would obviously be, be a lot more money because of the yield that you get from the staking and from things like big payday. And if you're, it's, it's almost like, uh, that movie, uh, Spider-Man where it's like, Hey, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, that is definitely something that money becomes and it does become an amplifier. Um, but if someone is not really mature enough or ready for that kind of, you know, wealth or, or what that can mean, right? Because now you've got more options. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe it starts to do the opposite of what you wanted, which you thought was going to like make your life better. Maybe it does the opposite. And, you know, if you have any sort of like shortcoming or thing that you're lacking for, or, you know, addictions and things like that, you know, now it just kind of feeds it, the, the money itself, the excess money kind of feeds it even, even faster and even deeper and allows you to, you know, maybe enable behaviors that you wouldn't have had before if you were working. And so I think a lot about these things where um, someone like Crypto Heartbeat, right, Matt, he says um, that, hey, a lot of us are here, you know, at this moment in time and in Hex and in Pulse and, and uh, PulseX for a certain reason. And he brings up this point, which is like, okay, once you've got what, whatever you're looking for, right? Your, your car, your house, you know, the wife changing money, right? Um, your watches, whatever else. Um, when, once you have all of that, you know, then what next? And Richard Hart actually talks about this, but if you're, if you're not really doing anything productive for the world or for society or something that you can almost like pay it forward and get back and contribute to, then, you know, is that really gratifying? And is that maybe your best self and best potential that you that you feel comfortable existing with? Um, I know most people, you know, they they love to think of the idea of, hey, all I want to do is just be retired, you know, be at a beach like Hawaii and just sit pina coladas all day and, uh, you know, and have it made, you know, have my maid bring me pina coladas all day while I while I surf or while I. <laughs> you know, enjoy the beach. But I think reality is a little bit different than that. And it's almost like, uh, I don't know, it's almost like a vacation where, where someone that, that does that, they experience that, that say they hadn't before. Well, after, I don't know, a certain amount of time, say, you know, maybe one month, two months, however long, uh, it almost becomes boring because maybe it's not 
fulfilling. And so that's one thing funding Jim, I've heard him talk about that like, hey, and, and you look at people like Bitfinex, where even though he could retire, right, he's, uh, he's not, you know, he's financially capable to do so, but he wants to keep his time entertained. Uh, so he doesn't, you know, do things that that might not be as beneficial. Um, so it's interesting because what do you what do you do with all of your time once you have the opportunity to buy it back? You know, do you then you know sleep in a whole bunch every day or um, have a lack of ambition for things because now you've got a whole bunch of capital that you feel kind of like fills that hole or that need? Um, those are things that can definitely happen, and those are things that have personally happened to me in the past. And um, once again, I would like everyone to consider the trajectory that you're on, um, because it didn't take longer than a year and a half for that $1,000 in this example to become $10 million. And some people, um, some people over a whole lifetime wouldn't be able to get that kind of wealth. But because, you know, this person in this example, or you in this example, happen to invest in a, a good product, good project, well then, hey, you know, you happen to be one of the ones that got, got it super quickly. But, you know, getting things like that super quickly do come with, you know, everything's got a pro and a con to it, right? People would love to become rich overnight, but then, you know, what do you do then once you have all of the time and, you know, you don't have to work at your job anymore or you don't have to do these other things that normally you did do? So it's just a it's just a challenge to everyone to uh, you know uh, crypto heartbeat says like hey once again after you've had your watches all of that good stuff uh, like what can you do to get back or to give someone uh, a hand and it doesn't necessarily have to be a hand out like crypto heartbeat says but uh, almost like a hand up so for me I like doing these videos I like uh, you know constantly progressing myself and kind of learning about, hey, how can we, if you've got a machine, right, uh, a car, an engine, you know, how can we take this machine? And, you know, sure, it's got as, as much oil as it wants, but how do we make sure that it's well oiled versus too much oil in the machine, right? Or too little oil in the machine? How do, how do we keep this thing running on all cylinders? And um, I think people, once again, I think people should consider this because just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should per se. Uh, even though you have the means to actually do so. So um, once again, the the actual money itself and the excess abundance, as RG3 has said, as a whole bunch of people that have uh, you know been around wealth for a long time, is that it is like an amplifier. And so that's just something to consider is that, hey, you know, that roller coaster, right? You've got kind of just the normal ups and downs, but then it's almost like, uh, you know, a roller coaster on steroids, right? Where now with say the uh, the money and the capital that allows you to to do certain things or or to go to certain places, now if you're if you're not really grounded, I guess, and really kind of you know true to yourself per se, or or really just done a lot of work on on how to kind of overcome these obstacles, then the roller coaster can just go from like this to like you know almost like a damn heart attack where it's like you know one of these things like. Psh, 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 one of those things. So it's just something to consider because, you know, even someone like Richard talks about, hey, when you're poor, you've got certain problems, but when you're rich, you've got problems that are just different problems. And so, you know, try not to fall into the, the trap that other people have uh, with the sudden wealth syndrome. And, you know, just because once again, you, you can spend a whole bunch of money on extra things and, and extra items, uh, do you splurge and do you uh i don't know i guess ball out on things that are what would uh you know what you wouldn't normally be able to do if you didn't have the wealth like are you are you doing things in excess that can eventually be you know bad habits or bad spending you know you're you're spending a whole bunch more than you need to be and then now are you creating habits instead of the good habits that allowed you to attain the wealth retain it are you now, you know, developing habits or spending things like this that will pretty much be the opposite? Will they'll almost more quickly diminish the funds than they would have before 
because maybe before you were more conservative because, hey, maybe you couldn't afford all of these different extras. And so just because someone can, doesn't it, it doesn't mean that you should. So just something to consider. Um, I want to cover this topic a lot more from someone who's a 25 year old that is retired from Hex early on uh, as of last year, because it's a, it's not a situation that most people my age are in. And I definitely understand that. And it's also something that once again, not many people in my age or, you know, even relative age range have ever been in. And so you really have to ask yourself, I ask myself like, okay, what is the, the best thing that I can be doing with my time? Or how can I, you know, keep doing things that are productive for other people, my loved ones, my, you know, my friends and family, but then also helping other people get to where they want to go as well. Um, because once you've, once you've had your, your life changing money, your wife changing money, right? Your, your success and stuff. Do you, do you just sit and retain all of the information and not give everyone else the, the golden goodness, the golden secrets? Um, and you just let them kind of, you know, like, do you kind of just let them do things on their own? Or do you say, hey, you know, I'm so grateful that I had this opportunity. Most people haven't had this opportunity. And then now you take that as an, as a initiative to, you know, then pay it forward or, or help and get back. And for me, I've found as I've kind of asked some, myself some of these questions, I find that there is more uh, fulfillment in the latter versus the former, right? There is more fulfillment in asking yourself, hey, how can you, you know, still benefit people and still, you know, educate yourself and teach yourself, but also, you know, kind of have it be a win-win reciprocal where, you know, it's a give and take where, you know, the person is giving the information and the person on the other side of the screen is taking their time and they're listening and they're consuming the information, trying to better themselves. So that's one of the cool things, right? If you, you know, if you, uh, if you have like a one-off, then someone might just, oh, hey, you randomly got lucky, randomly won and stuff like this. But if you can teach other people the things that you've learned along the way or the things that, that you did personally to get to a certain success, then, you know, it behooves you to help that other person and to teach that other person versus, you know, the opposite of an abundance mentality, which is a scarcity mentality, which is a me versus them mentality. So once again, thank you, everyone. Um, I love feedback on the comments like this. And once again, I, uh, I've got a lot of these topics that I want to cover from anecdotal experience or just certain questions that people might not be asking themselves currently that I think will be relevant for their future when they have these things that they thought would take longer to attain. And so what happens if, if someone thinks that, oh, you know, uh, I'll be able to attain this goal in, in 10 years and what happens when they attain it in two? You know, now it just completely changes perspective and paradigm of, of like that learning curve and of them needing to, you know, act now and get their shit together now. So then they can, you know, keep going up on the trajectory instead of, hey, you know, we, we did this thing in two years instead of, instead of 10 years. And now we're, we're almost in over our head and how we're going down because it, you know, we're in, an, we're in over our head. So that's pretty much it for everyone for now. Thanks, everyone. See everyone next time. Peace.